I just want to say thank you to everyone who watches my YouTube channel. And if you don't think a Savannah Monitor will play tug of war, you're wrong. Because they will. And they're actually really good at it. There we go. So if you guys like my videos, oh, he's strong. Please go ahead and leave a like. That helps grow my channel. Also, please comment on my videos. I love interacting with you guys. Uh, it's a lot of fun and I get to answer questions and see that you guys care. Uh, and if you're not a member of the family, you can go ahead and subscribe. It's free. It helps me grow the channel even more. And I've listened to you guys and I do have a Patreon down below. Oh, the alligator death roll. So please go ahead and uh, like, comment, subscribe, bell icon. Hi everyone. I wish I could say this was a video I was happy to make, right Simba? But it, it's a video I'm not happy to make, but really needs to be made. And this is about the upcoming bill with the Lacey Act amendments in it. And I know I've seen people look around and guys, this is a, a massive bill. This is, I don't want to get too political, but here in the US, it's very common to just make these 4,000 page bills, these omnibus bills, and unless you you really look and you really look at every single line, which most people don't do, you find these things that, why are they in there? They shouldn't be in there. And now we have a bill that has already passed the House. So if you're unfamiliar with the way it works here in the U.S., and I know people have done this, we have three branches of government and all must approve on the bill for it to go through. So it is passed the House, the first, the lower chamber, goes to the higher chamber of the Senate, and if it passes there, it goes to the president. The president's going to probably sign whatever he gets. He's not going to read a 4,000-page bill. I don't know if presidents that would. Sometimes they have advisors, but when you have bills that are called the American Competes Act, and, you know, this is good for America, yeah, but then you have 5,000 other things that have nothing to do with America in it, it typically confuses people into thinking it's a good bill. Or... Maybe most of the bill is good, but then why do we have these line items that don't need to be in there? This is a bill just like that, where there's some amendments to the Lacey Act. And if you're unaware of how in the US they regulate animals, exotic animals, normally it's done through a blacklisted system. It's pretty normal, it's just like our basic laws. Our laws don't tell you what you're allowed to do, they tell you what you're not allowed to do. So you're not allowed to speed, you're not allowed to kill people, things like that, but you're allowed to do everything else. Okay, good. So if there's not a law preventing it, it means you can do it. So with animals, there's a Savannah monitor, Simba. It's done just like that. Typically it's done with a blacklist, but there's no nationwide blacklist because here in the US, it's big enough and our position is on the earth is different enough that we have different climates. So up north where I live in Michigan, we go through a cold winter and our temperatures get into the negatives, negative Fahrenheit's, um, which is quite often happens. I've got two feet of snow outside right now. Down in Florida, there's certain areas that don't get snow at all. In Florida, and I've got friends in Southern Texas, it's 80 degrees right now. Here, it's four degrees. So we have different climates. So because of that, our regulating was done differently based on the state. The states handled it. In Florida, we've all heard about the iguana blacklisting, the tegu blacklisting, because what's invasive to Florida is not necessarily invasive all the way up north at the top of the state in Michigan. That's fine. Normally regulation is bad, but if regulation is done in specific areas, sometimes there's points. But even still in Florida, that's still a blacklist. So Florida says, hey, you can own everything except these species, Burmese pythons and things like that. Um, you are grandfather clause in. If you have them, there's things you need to do because they're too invasive. They're climbing in trees. They're eating our native birds. Okay, cool. What the amendment to the Lacey Act will do is scary guys and it's not just scary to reptile owners it's scary to all pet owners but it's also a scary type of law it wants to remove the blacklist concept and come out instead with a whitelist so therefore instead of telling you what you're not allowed to have 
they want to just tell you what you're allowed to have, kind of. And I'll get into that because they don't want to do a ban off of ownership yet. This is how it always starts, but they want to do a ban in control of them. So would, would, a, would a Savannah monitor be on this white list? Probably not. What about boas? Would they allow them? We have no way to know. But my guess is no, because when you see bans, you typically see them say, oh, banning all types of constrictors. Well, boas have the word constrictor in the species. And does it matter if you had a small baby boa like Ahsoka? Or what about a coiled, you know, 10-foot monster like Princess Zelda? No. And like I said, when we mention tagus, we know that they're already going to be a hard no. Right, Sweet Tooth? Furled dragons like Ripto? Probably not. This is, uh, you know, way outside of being native here to the U.S., Big fat African bullfrogs, probably not, and definitely not green basilisks, I'm sure. It's just not good. And what about bearded dragons, the, probably the number one owned lizard pet? Would they be on this white list? Who knows? How would it affect different color morphs? Would it be a species ban or a species allowance? Would only certain morphs? No idea, right? Because this is a blank whitelist that they want to fill in after the white the system is approved then they want to fill it in so hey let's have this whitelist system we're not going to tell you what is or isn't going to be on the whitelist but just trust us we'll do a good job after you give us all the power to fill it up we'll fill it up after no that's not how it works here's tetra my 16 year old normal ball python is that going to be allowed who knows, right? People will say, yeah, because ball pythons are commonly traded. So let's go into what this whitelist is for. This whitelist has nothing to do with ownership of these things, yet it has to do with allowing these things to cross between state lines and to come into the country. What is the problem with that? Well, one is that's how ownership and control and loss of rights always occurs. Give an inch, they take a mile. So as soon as we allow regulation into can you travel with your reptile or exotic or really, guys, this is just every animal, right? The Federal Fish and Wildlife, this is, they want every animal. So people will say, well, dogs will be on the white list. Maybe, maybe not. Like what breeds? All dogs? Who knows? We don't know. But with reptiles, it starts with, yeah, you just can't cross straight lines. So... What's this going to do? People think of this as the people who move. Hey, I've known friends who have moved from out of state or people who are in the military or government jobs who have had to move for their job. They can't bring their ball python with them. Well, they could, except you'll be breaking the law. You will be a felon. You will get a huge fine and jail time. Now, will they be actively hunting for people to do this? Probably not. But the second they catch someone, they'll make an example out of you. Well, the other problem is, what about pet stores? Oftentimes, even online pet stores, those will go away. People who are breeding these snakes look at Nerd, Brian Barczak, anyone with these exotic morphs who are then, you're purchasing and shipping these animals, even if you're shipping them to friends. That's not allowed. You will not be able to do that. Now, you'll still be able to breed and sell and own within your respected state, and you still would, for the time, be allowed to move around in your state, but you wouldn't be allowed to leave the state. So not only just for selling, what about people who do conventions, shows, filming for movies, etc.? You're no longer now allowed to take your reptile with you if it's on that, well, if it's not on that white list, but not just reptiles, birds, fish. That's right. Every pet has to be on this white list. So maybe we'll see ball pythons, but I can tell you what we won't see. We won't see iguanas. We won't see tegus. We probably won't see any monitor lizard. Um, for sure, nothing venomous. For sure, nothing venomous. Reticulated pythons, doubt it. Burmese, absolutely not. Anacondas, probably won't be on there. Probably corn snakes, but we don't know. Maybe ball pythons, but we don't know. 
Um, bearded dragons, maybe. Again, we don't know. PetSmart, Petco, they're shipping reptiles around and things like that. Eh -eh. Not going to happen. Will we see tortoises? No idea. But the worst part of this bill, hi Tortellini, is the type that they also are putting into the bill, which is if it's a species that is not natively found there, but could survive in that native area, it would be, it could be the entire species, according to the bill, could be removed, not allowed to travel. So now we're talking on the level of fish, go down to Florida and there's fish in the canals and things like that, that weren't naturally there, but can live there. Are we talking, we're stopping fish now? How about some exotic birds, um, some macaws and things like that, that weren't naturally from here, from South America and things like that? heavily used pet those would not be allowed to travel can you imagine someone with an african gray parrot or something that can live 70 plus years and now you're moving and you can't take your 60 year old pet with you unless you want to be labeled a felon could you even believe that not in the united states what kind of bill is handing over all of this blanket authority it's bad but there is something we can do because the bill is in the Senate now for votes, U.S. ARC, who guys, I can't help but tell you how good of an organization this is. They were the first ones to spot this hidden in this bill. Hidden, that's how they do it. I'll have the links below in the descriptions. You can find out who your local senator is, your state senator, two of them. And you can email them. You can call them and you say, hey, the Lacey Act Amendment needs to be removed. That is the best thing we can do. But when you guys make these calls, you can't yell at them, you can't swear at them, you can't type, I'm gonna kill you or anything like that. You have to be productive and you have to bring up, I don't agree with this act, it's gonna cripple the hobby, it's gonna cripple mom and pop pet stores that may trade with other pet stores, or how many people I know drive to Ohio, mom and pop pet stores, go to a reptile convention, buy tons of cool stuff from the convention, so now that local breeder has got money, drive it back up to their pet store here in Michigan and sell it out. Not only that, we have reptile conventions where people drive in from out of state in Michigan and in all these states and they show their product. They drive in from nearby states. That would all go away with this bill, which is just horrible. Don't you agree? That's good. We need to band together as a community and reach out and tell people that this is not good and the Lacey Act amendments need to be moved. I didn't want to make a super in-depth video. So many people have done it. I just wanted to let people know that this is not good. The idea of a whitelist and a whitelist that we have no idea what would even start on it, how many years it would take to add things, what type of appeal process is there to put something on or off, no clue is the worst type of regulation you can have. So contact your senators. Tell them we don't want this Lacey Act Amendment in there. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you guys for supporting my reptile rescue family.